Rex as uh, he wasn't feeling too good. Kale so we got the little. We see we get e subs too on the broadcast. Not only the team. So I was sleeping. Why'd you have to wake me up, bro? <laughs> Sorry, bro. Sorry, bro. Uh, but it was nice to hear a little bit from our mail. I love the setup with all of them behind him. He grew a couple of ears, but he also had a nice little, uh, nice little entourage yeah. behind him. Were the him, ears or sure. antlers I, at that point? Because there was like antlers? eight of them. Well, because there was like eight of them. He just has such a big brain. He's got space for all the ears. I think it's. I, I feel like that's typically that the the play though from Team Liquid, right? Whenever there is an interview, especially mm -hmm. if it's like a big interview, everybody's like chilling behind. I remember when I had an interview with, I think it was, uh, I can't remember if it was Harry or Yon, but everybody in the background was like yeah. sitting there, like crowding the glass, right? <laughs> in, and the, it's just, in the facility where they. <laughs> yeah, you, you can just tell that these guys really enjoy playing with each other, and that's mm -hmm. something that is always a big plus whenever you have a team that's been playing together for so long. It also, I just want to say. I don't want to see Bradley on Gangplank anymore, mostly because how how can that get through bands? Every time. Yeah, I love different... seeing that. If I no, can clip a play I, like I that like every Bradley, day, I'm down. I like to watch Bradley play it, but teams should like do their dil due diligence and say, hey, no, that's not okay. I feel like you say this about every player who has ever won on every champion. Yeah, right. right? Yeah, like, eventually you know, there will be no champion. You're not play no. Ezreal no. or Zeri it's, or There's Kalista. certain players that crush on certain champions, and they shouldn't be allowed to play them. Seraphine is the only one where I'm like, just globally, no. And then it, then you have, like, individual ones, like gang playing mm. for for uh, Bradley. I got Fiora for Tenacity. I got Camille for uh, Surdy. There's certain champions, you know, that it's like, no, no, no. I don't want to, like, if you're letting them have that, that's your own fault. Yeah, I, I think it's an interesting conversation this with the next couple of weeks, how that synergy is going to develop into Proving Grounds. So I was trying to get some of the behind the scenes question because, like, th this has just been a, a crucial point for them is just being dominant. I, I just want to give one little point to TSM Academy, right? Obviously, expectations were high with some of the LCS drop downs, but you still have to think that. The team needs some time to gel. The team needs mm -hmm. some time to actually play together. So we'll see also checking in on TSM Academy as, as the weeks go on. I think but they now had, we gotta... what, two days of scrims or something like uh, that together? Maybe. maybe. It was maybe. really, really short. <laughs> maybe. So yeah. we have to take like this whole week with a grain of salt for TSM. Yeah, exactly. But it is nice to see some of that aggression still there. But anyways, we got to keep the train rolling. We got 100 Thieves Academy taking on FlyQuest Academy. FlyQuest Academy got upset. By TSM Academy, who just lost in their previous series, and 100 Thieves themselves trying to continue some of that uh, synergistic play, maybe reminiscing a little bit on Team Liquid Academy. But this uh, this next series is going to be an absolute fun one. And uh, immediately off the bat, we did get to hear a little bit of chatter between a couple players, specifically Busio and Diamond. So I want to go ahead and hear what they had to say. Any other support can have as large of a champion pool with the Senna as I can. And I mean, it's not really their fault. It's like they didn't play mid lane. They don't have the skill set and the habits I learned from mid lane. So it just is what it is. Yeah, I don't know how long Diamond's been playing support, but it's been a really long time. So I think his mid and bot lane skills have probably diminished a lot. It's, I think the Busio thing is just so, so funny to me. Like, I like no hate to Busio itself, but like the the any carrier guys like it's not even the same player. Like we're not talking about the same player. There's at least like four better. Uh, I said five or five better academy supports right now. I think putting that much pressure on him is not even a good thing. You know, uh, if he doesn't succeed and he does poorly, I would feel bad for the guy like generally because I think he has like a future as long as he like keeps like tryharding. You know, but wall swaps is like so like you're not instantly good. You have to actually be like really good at your other role. Like I think Zven has like potential. I don't think Zven is like amazing right now. I think like the community like uh like feedback on him like he, he of course he will get really good because he was so good when he was an indie carry right <laughs> gotta love hearing from both of them especially a little bit of that extra heat coming out of the side of diamond uh busio is just saying hey set of things and, but uh I, i'm really excited to see these two guys go together right the the budding star the established cheat code bot lane everything that comes into this one and especially how they play into the rest of their team and that's where we got to bring up the FlyQuest academy roster we got to bring up how Diamond fits into this mold here magically. Yeah. Well, I see Diamond as like the the leader. He's someone who likes to take charge for the team. We, you already mentioned the cheat, uh, bot lane with cheat codes that we've talked about time and time again. But really, Diamond is someone that when he's put in, you know, in charge, he's the guy calling the shots. Even when you look at the games that he played on Amumu, where I think he went like one and five in their victory, one and nine in their loss. 
he was the one leading the charge. He was the one mm. making the calls like, okay, we need to look for these plays. He was playing a Mumu in a way that is not at all for KDA or to even care how he does. It was purely for how the team can react around him and follow what he is commanding them to do. But even then, we know he's a very intelligent player, right? We had him on the analyst desk during Proving mm -hmm. Grounds, and it was very clear to me that he knew what he was talking about. He very clearly had a process for mm -hmm. analyzing the game and talking about where everything was. But let's face it right now, Alex, FlyQuest have won three of their last 12 games. This team is yeah. struggling right now. They have been on a downward curve for a little while. And it's a team that has enough like veteran players, and Tomo, Diamond, and Kumo in particular, that we're kind of asking like where are they going to be spending their development bucks next right it's you know you can try and develop five players like we saw with Dignitas and they had mixed results but having a little bit more focus on a couple players I think might really allow FlyQuest to potentially skyrocket yeah and especially looking at those couple players Yuji and Spyrex right up to bat right being the centerfold of, of FlyQuest Academy I think a lot of the rising promise that we've seen from FlyQuest Academy does center around how the team is structured with those veterans, veteran parts, but it's also how we've seen UG and Spyrex perform within that system, Joshi. Yeah. Exactly. And we definitely know that UG has some really bright moments, and when FlyQuest is doing well, it's because UG and Spyrex really are having an opportunity, but in a lot of their losses, they're kind of invisible, right? We yeah. definitely have seen that both of them have really exciting moments, but it's also important to note that yesterday when they were playing up against TSM, we saw Spyrex was on his signature Azir. When we see right now, like, he knows how to play the champion. <laughs> it's been his most played so far. He's put eight games on it, five more than the next highest. But where was he yesterday, right? It's one of those things mm -hmm. where we have to ask when we look at these development pieces, it's okay to limit us a little bit. You can play like Jan. You can be an absolute psychopath. You just need to showcase that you can do all of the things that we know you're capable of and giving yourself opportunities to actually make it happen. So, Josh, to answer your question of where he was, probably in the studio. Have, uh, if I probably had to, the studio. Had, if I had to venture a guess Is that anywhere. What it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's where he mm -hmm. was, and I'm like, that's probably where he was. I can't guarantee it, obviously, but... But where you know, was he on the rift? Um, <laughs> he was there. Good he was, question. He had selected tough, a tough champion, question. but that, he got that's a exactly the he thing got a we're kill. looking for, right? He did. He did have more than one KP. Props to that, but this is definitely a spot where I don't, we know he no, uh, uh, He did not have more than one KP. That. I think he was like yeah, one of two. It was more than zero, for it sure. It was more but than we zero, know, for you sure. We know UG and Spyrex, they're kind of the developmental pieces here for Flycus, that we want to see them continue to develop, and... We've seen this with like 100 Thieves on the other side, and we'll talk about them more in a sec, but 100 Thieves kind of use the game as a way to figure out and limit test and try and f uh, use it as extra scrims because everybody's going to be going to Proving Grounds. I kind of yeah. see FlyQuest do that a little bit more and see players like Yuji and Spyrex have more of their pop-off games. Yeah, I think uh, when we bring up the 100 Thieves roster, it's conversations about how these pieces work together, a lot of the nuances that we're seeing. Busio, the, the Busio and Jimmy, and rather, the, the mm -hmm. ones sticking around, a lot of the other pieces changing going into summer, but with faces that we've known and loved, right? Except maybe a little bit of the newness on BMFX, but Will, Tenacity, we mainstays in the developmental side of, of North America, and I think for FlyQuest Academy, coming off those tough losses yesterday, coming into this one, this is a, a, a tough test for them, and we're going to need to see UG and Spyrex really be able to perform to some extent against this pretty stacked roster, man. Yeah, however, FlyQuest might have gotten upset, so did 100 Thieves. They dropped they that second game against the Evil Geniuses Academy, and, if, and it was... Pretty much that entire series was well fought by both sides. 50-minute game in the first one, then a 40-minute game in the second one where Evil Geniuses came out on top because they had drafted a better identity for themselves in the late game. The, we got to look at how 100 Thieves can be punished. I feel like a lot of it is actually through Busio. Because Busio, I think, is, is, is a fantastic support player. But he plays yeah. so many different styles that it only really lends into when BMFX is on Senna. When yeah. he's not on Senna, that's where they start having some issues. That's where yeah. BMFX is not allowed to play these unique styles that can catch people off guard. I feel like that's something they need to grow to make sure that uh, Busio can continue to be one of our top yeah. prospects as a support. Yeah, yeah and I kind of want to be be real, right, because uh, I was pretty critical of Jinmian yesterday. And I feel like 100 Thieves is a team that we should be you know, keeping a close eye on how they're playing because... You have the most improved player coming in from PCS as an import, and we have to look at like what other imports 100 Thieves have had in their academy. They had Gomsu, they had Luger, 
both those guys spent a year in Academy, and they're now both playing in LCS. Hey, Poom, when, too. Uh, also, <laughs> Poom, right? We, yeah. Was he an import? No, he's not an import, but he's in the okay, LCS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, but the idea, right, like, they, they bring in these imports in order to send them up towards the, the next level, yeah. right? And so when we look at a team that has Tenacity, who we're saying is the best top laner in all of Academy, we're looking at Busio, mm -hmm. who we say has an opportunity to be a top three support in the entire league. We look at Jimian, who had a decent career over in the PCS now, and we see games where they get perfect game by Evil Geniuses, who is one of the bottom teams. That should be frustrating for us it to watch, be. right? Yeah. They should be holding themselves to a higher standard than that. And that's what I'm going to be looking at them going up against FlyQuest, who are on a downswing. I want 100 Thieves to showcase why we think that all these players are the best players we have. I yeah, will exactly. say, look, we, we, oh, uh, we got to go straight to Chips. Oh. Like, sorry, guys. <laughs> like, I've been I waiting to wrap something. I've been holding my fingers up. Game. We got to get Chips. Like, Magical Joshi, take it away. Alright, fine. Fine. <laughs> fine, fine, fine. We'll get into Champion Select, I suppose. As we, we have to talk about the games, But I, I want to correct you still. It was a near-perfect game. It wasn't quite a perfect game. It was a near-perfect game. Near yeah, perfect yeah. game. It was so, very close. It was close. I thought it was going to be a perfect yeah. game at first, but, you know, it didn't happen. Now, we got to see how 100 Thieves bounce back in today. Going up against yeah. FlyQuest, as you kind of talked about, on a downward spiral as of late. They started off the season so hot. But they have not been able to strike the iron nearly as consistently as yeah. of late. And with the break, we expect, you know, maybe they get a refresh. Maybe they can come into this one and start to reset their mental. But unfortunately, it starts off with a, a 0-2 right off the bat. Now they got to face off against 100 Thieves. And we already see the ban. There's a lot of bot lane focus from the side of FlyQuest. I'm surprised. No Senna ban, though. True, no Senna ban. That is something that BMFX has played almost every single time he has uh, had an opportunity to do so. But again, I, looking down towards the bottom lane, right, we know that BMFX and Busio have had some mixed success. They've taken down some of our strongest bottom lanes. But we also just heard Diamond say, he thinks that the expectation we're setting up for Busio might be too much, right? Mm -hmm. He says that he thinks that there are at least four or five other supports currently in Academy that are already better than him. And you don't say that unless you think you're one of them. So Diamond now needs to showcase that he can really put it down to this bottom lane. And while we have really high hopes from B, uh, from Busio, BMFX might be the more attackable part of the lane. That Tomo and Diamond, if you're playing with cheat codes, should be able to win a 2v1. Well, and that's why I was surprised to see Senna get through. Senna has been the go-to champion for BMFX because it really does facilitate the role Busio wants to play, which is pretty much be open to anything. Have his, uh, an identity that doesn't necessarily have to mold and conform to what everyone else has been playing. And that's why I look at this, the Zeri uh, pickup, I see a lot of pressure that Tomo can already put onto Senna early. It just depends on what Busio wants to grab, if it's just going to be a typical Tom Kench lane or if they want to spice it up Ooh. a bit. Yeah, and they also are going to be grabbing the Talia coming in for Yuji. He's only played this once before, and we've seen it once from Spyrax. So a little bit more unusual picks coming through from FlyQuest when Talia was one of the best champions that we were expecting coming into summer. But 100 Thieves, like you said, they have a lot of opportunities. Busio, you did the video with all of them recently about how many different things you can play with this champion. We've seen Busio have some fun, right? He's played the Yasuo down there in the bottom lane, especially alongside the Senna. And I think we could see some very very similar opportunities here. Even 100 Thieves, they already recognize Whoa. it, and they're locking it in. Okay. Tenacity has egoed on this. It was a little bit too much ego, but Busio also had a game on this, so we have no idea where this is going. Well, it's the triple flex, right? Tenacity, yeah. Jimmy, and or Busio. Any one of them could play this champion, and we already know that they're all pretty good at it. Even if Tenacity did ego that game a bit and blind faked it, it's still, but it shows that he has the prowess and the capabilities of playing it. But on the other side, Yone locked in. That could be for Kumo or Spyrex, which still leaves full flexibility around both that True. and the Talia pick. Now, we haven't seen Kumo play it just quite yet, but it does have some good matchup top lane. Spyrex has played both of the Wind Brothers as some of his uh, you know, third and fourth most played. So I'm expecting it to go towards the mid lane, and that would imply that Talia prop most likely to be going towards the jungle. But it is, it is still flexible. We do have right. a lot of opportunities to move that around. And now FlyQuest... I'm a little bit surprised by this Alistar ban, right? Same Diamond here. has played, uh, you know, things like the Nami, things like the Janna and the Karma, right? A lot of these enchanters, and I feel like FlyQuest already have enough engaged that it's a little bit surprising uh, to me the 100 Thieves want to take that away, especially since it's something that Busio could potentially play as another knockup if it's Jimmy and Yasuo. Exactly. Just kind of add up to the Wombo Combo with Yasuo, Wukong, Alistar. That all would be nice and dandy. As you can see, though, 
FlyQuest are not convinced that that Yasuo is mid lane. They are convinced that it's going to the bot lane with the bans on LeBlanc and Lissandra. That or they're trying to force Yasuo into mid because they have an idea of how they want to play against it. Yeah, I mean, because it's a triple flex, it is so hard to actually draft around. And as the Aatrox ban comes through, it feels like FlyQuest are now in a spot where they are, are confident that you give Tenacity whatever, Kuma's going to have a counter pick to it. And instead, FlyQuest, as they start looking at the rest of their composition, they lock in. Oh, I thought they got locked no, in. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's all like, <laughs> not yet, not yet. I'm watching. I'm waiting. We got Bane You're and waiting. Breath. It's, is it? Is it? Is it? I mean, you still have lots. I, I'm fine with no, all, that's it. all oh, of those champions. Oh, uh, I don't like this champion. I don't like this. We <sighs> saw like this, this yesterday. Either. You and I casted this yesterday. I was not convinced by Kumo playing Gragas. Look, if, if Solo is going to beat you up on the Gragas, Tenacity is going to be even worse, right? It, it is going to be a tough top lane if Kumo takes us up towards the top side yet again. But it can still build the Frozen Heart and be like, oh, that's a lot of physical damage auto attackers that suddenly do a lot less damage. So it's not the worst thing in the world, but as the Gangplank comes through, we get the double barrel top lane here coming out from Tenacity and Kumo. I already feel as though 100 Thieves they're picking a lot of these elements that allow some of their star players to kind of pop off. And I feel like this is them being a little annoyed that they got slaughtered yesterday going up mm -hmm. against uh, Evil Geniuses in Game 2. They don't want to let that happen again. But the one thing that does disturb me with the composition drafted by 100 Thieves is the lack of AP damage. Silas will make up for it a little bit, but everything else is purely AD. And Kumo, please build tank this game it will work perfectly for you against this composition we'll see we definitely know the night harvester has been the item of choice for grogs is going up into the pop lane so far and but, FlyQuest, they, but josh look I, at I the know. ad damage <laughs> interesting okay Wait, is that grog okay. support is that grog support oh uh, go off go off no do your thing alex no 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 no, no. i'm being realistic it, could it, be it is. It's great. It's Gragas support. Oh my god. Okay. So, Gragas support. Wait. Now, this is really interesting to see that it is, you know, against the Yasuo as well. Because while Gragas does struggle in certain capabilities against Yasuo, the one good tried and true thing that you're going to do as Gragas support is just belly slam. You're going to try to use that at all times, and Winwell does nothing to stop that. True. And it's definitely a good opportunity for Diamond to showcase the flexibility on the champ. This is a much better matchup for Kumo up here in the top side, and it will give him some opportunities, right? We've seen that players like Surdy, players like Tenacity, players like Bradley have been punished very heavily when yeah, originally Darshan was starting to bring out this Trinimir as a top play pick, specifically as a counter for this matchup. And so, Kumo now threatening to really beat up Tenacity potentially, and that can give them an opportunity into the game of Tenacity is kind of isolated and not allowed to participate. 100 Thieves are kind of losing one of their main carry players. And this is why I think I love that flex from the side of FlyQuest. It works so well to try to counteract that that's being thrown at them by 100 Thieves Academy. And this would be a great time for FlyQuest to start get picking up these wins. They got to get out of their slump. 100 Thieves dropping a game to Evil Geniuses yesterday. This is their time to prove that that was just a fluke. Yeah, and we have to remember all the way back to week one, the last time these two teams played up against each other, there were two substitutes that have been made since then. Tenacity, excuse me, uh, go. Oh. Oh. Kuma was Philip back then, and mm -hmm. Busio was Sword. So it is, it was a 2 0 going in favor of FlyQuest, but we have had, again, a bunch of changes to both rosters. I feel like 100 Thieves have showcased a lot of individual prowess, but the big thing is that FlyQuest tend to be a little bit more standard when it comes to a lot of their plays. Mm -hmm. FlyQuest at the moment, though, are threatening a late invade with Diamond hovering around, seeing Jimian kind of poking back and forth, back and forth, waiting to see if they want to pull that trigger. As you get spotted out, they decide to fall back and instead help out Yuji. We get the vision toggle. Spyrax is going to be walking in. Remember, this is one of the things we're looking at, right? Who are the developmental pieces for both teams? Yuji and Spyrax are the easy answers for FlyQuest. Whereas Jimian, he's on one of the champions that he first really started impressing me on, right? He was playing that Silas, got a triple kill by hopping over the dragon wall, and that's when I started being like, 
Okay. Maybe Jimmyan is going to be the best mid laner that we have in Proving Grounds. And for most of the rest of the tournament, he was really impressive mm -hmm. in the way that he was able to play a lot of um, a lot of his lanes and just take control of games, especially through the side lane. And I'm watching to see if they can do that here. Jimmyan on Silas. We've seen him play it before, and like you were kind of calling out, back in Proving Grounds before. Really strong player, especially to carry the team. This is a solo AP damage source for the team. They're really going to have to utilize them to the fullest effect, because right now, Tenacity, normally someone who's pretty strong in top lane, is going to struggle against Trinity. You already see, he's getting pushed in, has had to burn a lot of mana, and crucially, Will is having away from him as... I don't think Spyrex got any of the chickens, but he's got nah. a couple of stacks off the queue. He knows where Will is, so that can make it very difficult for Tenacity to actually play this out, because Kumo knows, oh, I'm isolated in a 1v1, time to fight. Exactly. Spyrex is continuing to harass Jimmy in mid lane, making sure that he can push back and give all the time in the world to Yuji. And that's what I'm looking for, is where Yuji ends up making his mark first, because he's been able to power farm, get all this free CS as bot lane struggles a little bit back and forth, but no real, no real definitive win. And it's fascinating to watch, right? This Yasuo, it's already hit level two, and it's really creating a lot of pressure up against Tomo and Diamond. They don't feel as though they can really walk up, even with the crazy range that Tomo is able to bring. That is both junglers on opposite sides of the rift. Kumo has an opportunity to threaten to freeze, and I feel like Yuji should stick around a little bit longer to try and punish Nasty with over. Will's been spotted out. They know this dive is being attempted. Tomo, Tomo is taking a lot of damage. The flash in from Will. They ignite, burns, a kill. As Busio still alive on the other side. Wow. Diamond was not able to trade it back. Well done. Cleanly done by 100 Thieves. Cost them a couple of flashes, but nobody goes down. They take exactly the number of turret shots they could, and Tenacity caught. So this is the answer. This is the play that you use to try to make sure you're gaining something back, but unfortunately, it's only a flash. And so, 100 Thieves coming out with a win, and this is one of the first times we've seen that 100 Thieves actually having some of these early game plans. Will going for the dive down here, getting BMFX and Busio ahead has already put Tomo and Diamond in a situation where they're kind of getting pushed around. Notice the fact that Diamond has <laughs> almost as much CS as Tomo does. Why? Wow, no. He had to cl uh, clear out that entire wave there. It was a massive one that was built up by 100 Thieves. It was a well executed dive. Not like We got to see that too. Look at how massive that minion wave is that they're crashing. Yeah, and they, unfortunately, they don't have an opportunity to really clear it out. So it's just a matter of landing all the damage that you can. The root goes through it. I love the fact that Busio takes exactly the number of turret shots he needs to and then flashes out, allowing everybody else in 100 Thieves to do what they need to. And now, we're starting to see the junglers once again. I think they're going to see a very similar spot to what we had before. Will go down as the oh, ghost goes through. Pop, looking for the solo kill against Tenacity. The barrel's doing a lot of damage back onto T Kumo, but Kumo's got a lot of damage, does he? With the barrels, with the chain, with the flash, Kumo takes down Tenacity. There you go, Kumo recognizing the double summoner spell advantage will take down Tenacity, and we said this matchup is going to be very tough. We saw Kumo have a really tough time when he was playing the Gragas yesterday up against Solo, but he is back with a vengeance as he finds a solo kill to turn around the play from bottom side. Getting himself that gold, split push, menace, Trindamir. Gonna be a great start for FlyQuest, but I'm still waiting. I haven't really seen Yuji have much of a mark on the map so far. He's been power claiming, uh, clearing for sure, but when does he actually oh. help out? Because bot lane is struggling with that tornado connecting onto Tomo, who has to flash away, but the flash is coming in from BMFX trying to chase down Tomo and make sure that he is going to be mince meat with Diamond soon to fall too. But Diamond might be able to take one back with him, but he doesn't have enough damage. Busio says, no way, Jose. And there we see even more play coming through. The benefits of having that dive go well in the first place. Suddenly, the MFX and Busio are accelerated. And, you know, I feel bad for Diamond Dry. That's what happens when you, you know, talk some smack. Mm -hmm. You got to be able to back it up. And Tomo and Diamond, they lost control of the wave early on. They got dove in this Zeri matchup. And suddenly, 100 Thieves are miles ahead. Tomo and Diamond are not going to be able to play for quite a while because Tomo will just not have damage. No, and this is what I think 100 Thieves needed to do. Attack the bot lane. No longer do they get to play with cheat codes this game. It's exactly the opposite. They got a handicap because of the bot lane. 
So now suddenly our rookies, UG and Spyrax, are the players who have to have a lot of pressure put on them. They need to start making the plays. Spyrax has got the Yone into the silence. Like it's a decent matchup, but it's Jim it's one of Jimmy's signature picks. It is. It it's TakeOver and Jimian on Silas. So it's w the brutal combination of those two and how good they are at this champion. And you can tell that Jimian, he's moving just fine. He might be down just slightly in CS, but it's not nearly like this bot lane where you can see the support. Busio taking it to Tomo each time, saying, all right, you can't really fight against me. Tornado Connect, is he going to solo him? Yeah, he's going to solo him with Ignite. It was the walk away. Those are the mid laner mechanics coming through. Busio Allen still having a fantastic time. Solo kills Tomo, and this is this is the hundred thieves I was looking for yesterday, right? They are finding the plays everywhere that they need to. The only place they need to keep uh, keep propped up for a little while is going to be Tenacity. He's still in this brutal matchup. He still doesn't have a flash, and I feel like that's where FlyQuest can start to look for these plays. Yuji, as you called out, has just been power clearing, but power clearing Talia is not going to solve the problems of. Very fed Yasuo. <laughs> exactly. A thousand gold over Tomo, because that's usually how you have to compare it when it comes to the center lane. But then also a thousand gold for BMFX over Diamond. They have two thousand gold in total over FlyQuest, pretty much making the entire lead. Actually, it is the entire lead because there's a deficit in top side of the map, but that might be counteracted now with Tenacity getting a little bit of help from Will. Yeah, I mean, he's just going to be crashing this wave, right? Making sure that Tenacity doesn't get froze on for the foreseeable future. But it might be allowing Tenacity to also come down for a Rift Herald if they want it. They need to play uh, away. They need to make sure that Tenacity has opportunities to get strong and scale into the game because... Not again. Oh, yeah, not, again. One not, place. not again. <laughs> I was about to say. Not yet, not yet. Yeah, he's got ult. But he's, he's frozen. Level six. He's frozen the wave. The Tomo can't do anything here. This is brutal in the bot lane, and uh, again, bringing it back to UG Spyrex. They've got to strike soon. They've got to get something back, because Kumo is doing a fine and dandy job in top lane, but they need something more than just a minute lead top side. Yeah, it is not enough to have this CS lead in the mid lane. It's not enough to have this CS lead up in the top side. Yasuo is going to have a fantastic time into this game, and he can split again into all of these guys later on, so... I I like the position the Hundred Thieves have found themselves in. It's a big turnaround. They're making early game plans, and yesterday they picked like these crazy scaling compositions and just said, "Yeah, it's okay. We'll be fine later on. We will outhand people in the meantime." This time they're like, "Nope, we're gonna outhand you from minute one." Bye, Tomo. I'm not even gonna bother. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. I mean, I saw Will. I'm like, yeah, he's dead. There's he's not dead. much more to say there. And again. Yuji, he's trying to get a play somewhere. He's looking topside, looking for a dive on Tenacity, because honestly, that's the only place on the map that it can really focus on. Bot lane is completely doom and gloom. It's Diamond's doing his damnedest to clear out the menu waves, and kind of as you called out, he's got 23 CS as the support. He's doing everything just to make sure they get some gold back because they're losing and hemorrhaging that much of an advantage over to Boosie on BFX. Yeah. Rift Hell gets dropped at the top side. FlyQuest trying to fight back where they can, and this will be giving over more gold over to Kumo and Yuji, but I'm, hey, that could I'm be not something. sure this is going to be enough. It's something. They get the turret. That is a decent amount of gold. Suddenly, Kumo has become a, a very credible threat right. on this Trindamir. And as you called out, with so many physical damage champions, uh, the mocking shout coming out from Kumo is suddenly way more effective because it robs everybody of a BF sort of stats. Yes, and that's the that's the reason why I wanted to call it out earlier, is there are ways that uh, FlyQuest can still play around this. Even though they've fallen so massively far behind in bot lane, they've got ways to just item uh, the itemizations, the mocking shout from Trinomir. There's good uh, capabilities for them to still win mid game, or even late game. As you talked about, FlyQuest yesterday were playing more of the scaling composition. They were the ones more trying to see if they can have this composition that eventually would become too powerful that evil geniuses couldn't do much against them but now they're the team that are trying to put the pedal to the metal and while they've done so on one half of the map they haven't done so on the other so the arms race continues and we will we will pay more attention to when we start seeing these fed guys interact right the first time yeah. that busio and kumo interact will tell us a lot about how the rest of the game is likely to go because if one of them gets the shutdown on the other if one of them gets the kill that basically ends the arms race pretty quickly right you are suddenly in a situation where it's very difficult to play and naturally just on the way that these champions interact 
And favoring Kumo a little bit, right? He can guarantee the fight will go longer, so Yasuo's burst isn't necessarily going to be free. No, it, at least if he plays the game right. But keep in mind that despite that, Busio nearly has the exact same amount of gold that Kumo has. As a support, having that much gold for oh. yourself, he is really going to be the carry as well. He should die here. Spyrex nice. jumping back. There you go. That's a good play, but Let's the go, top rookies. side of the map still working out well for FlyQuest. Yeah, Yuji and Spyrax once again. We said that they needed to make a play. That's the first bit of KP that they've gotten so far. They are looking now towards the top side, and they still have both of their ultimates. And Tenacity has no flash. Tenacity's got no flash. He's definitely susceptible, but bot lane is also susceptible. Fusio's level 8. They fight on BMFX, but that's gonna be the flash in with the explosive cast into the wall. They've got the kill on Atomo of Diamond. He's doing his damnedest to fight back. Low health target on 100 Thieves, but with the tornado connecting as well as the last embrace, and it will be a double kill Busio side. Mm. Yep, Busio definitely. There's probably like four or five supports better than him, right? That's what I was hearing. Uh, Busio looking like the best player we might have in this game. 5-0-2 finds another 2v2 double kill. They take the bottom lane turret, and this bottom lane is so far ahead, and that means that they should get dragons. Oh, Spyrex getting clashed on by Will, forces the ult away. But as you talk about bot lane, losing that turret to 100 Thieves, Busio level 9 on, God, having a 500 gold bounty on his head as well. They've got full control the bottom quadrant that really FlyQuest, it is about seeing how they can split up the map because they don't want to go near Busio for a while. True, but Kumo unattended in the top lane. Tenacity does have his ultimate, but he hasn't come down to actually pick anything up. So FlyQuest, you know, it it feels like a meme at this point, but we're going to see Kumo, we're going to see Busio. They're going to try and out carry each other. And because Busio can't interact very well, I wonder if we're almost going to get to his split push situation, right? It's been a mm -hmm. long time since we've seen two powerful split pushers where one of them can't interact with the other. Yeah, and with the fact that they're even on gold, Kumo, he's got that's pretty much what they gotta do. He's gotta split push. You don't really wanna help out Busio get stronger and stronger. Instead, just split push, punish Tenacity any time he shows up. He still doesn't even have a mythic item. That is how far yeah. behind Tenacity has been put in this game. Oh, that's how miserable this matchup is, though, right? Yeah. He's got the Warden's Mail, he's got the uh, plated steel caps just to try and keep himself alive, and, you know, to his credit, he's not that far behind in farm for this matchup. Like, it's it's about what you'd expect. The bigger issue is that he's died and gave up the entire turret, so FlyQuest, when this next Rift Herald spawns, I think they need to make sure they can get it to Kumo, they can allow him to continue split pushing and finding these leads. It's about keeping the uh, state of the game split. As long as they can do that, FlyQuest have advantages. They gotta be careful, because yeah. now, 100 Thieves are trying to group up. They're trying to get all their pieces, at least the important ones. Jimian, Will, BMFX, all with Busio following them, set up so they can look for more plays, especially around the bot lane, since that is their advantage. Yeah, and so as we start going over to this dragon, it is a Hextech dragon. This time around, 100 no Thieves should be in firm control. Not soul yet, yep. But... I'm still kind of waiting for our rookies to come through. One of the things that we were talking about with Diamond as this big general coming in for FlyQuest as the guy who calls a lot of shots, when you're weak, it is so hard to be a mm -hmm. shot caller because you typically look at plays through the lens of how can my champion do things, and right now the answer is, well, Diamond can't do much of anything. So Waver's wall looking for Tenacity. They've got the Undying Rage with the shove back. Kill on to Tenacity as expected for Kumo. And there's another turret going down. They give up the dragon, or but do they? Kumo doesn't have Lucio. ultimate. Lucio's here to fight. He's, he's ready for it. You notice that Kumo doesn't have the ult. He might have the ghost, but instead they are going to peel back Busio and Will. Not really wanting to venture into the top side alone. So next time Kumo comes top lane, that turret will go down, right? It's like a stiff breeze will be enough to topple it. Kumo has the power necessary. We're still seeing oh. Tenacity, still not even on a mythic, and as Yuji comes top lane, this is what we were asking for, right? It can't be Diamond who has to make all the decisions for the team. Mm -hmm. Yuji when he has some power, Kumo when he has these two kills. These are the players that we suddenly look for as the ones to speak up and ask for the resources that they need. Spyrex on the other side. I don't want to say he's like, Splitting because he doesn't know what else to do, but it's definitely a spot where he needs to find more resources. He still mm -hmm. needs to get strong in order to participate in a lot of these fights. He does scale quite well. Yeah. He's just not there yet. 
No, it's still needed those items. Usually it's the second item for Yone where you really feel the full power. Gumo though, he's got Gale Force. He's feeling really strong. He's got two levels over Tenacity and saying, you know what, you don't get to play the game anymore. I'm keeping you away from your own turret bot side. And taking away a lot of Will's jungle, FlyQuest. Suddenly when Kumo has a power of strength, I mean, you get to see a very different version of him as we see 100 Thieves. One of the things that I was talking about yesterday is they always seem to make these good decisions around the map after they've had people dead. But yeah. they don't have anybody dead right now. And they're oh, already no. making plays, but Tenacity... Well, they might have someone dead in a second. Yeah, but Tenacity be probably is going to die in the flash away. That's going to be a nice final Tempest to pick up a kill. Where's Pyrex to Jimian? Wants to see if he can get a little bit of retribution back on the fight with his Pyrex getting a lot of damage back onto him, but Will has got the flank. The stolen at last Tempest not going to do anything except for make sure they can pick up the kill Kumo. after a long while. As Gumo, Gale forcing away so that it's not going to be a two for one. But it's not the shutdown going through, right? Fly quest, do keep Kumo alive, and look at this. He just takes more of Will's jungle away. Yeah, now this could be the time to get Diamond back in the game, get him a little bit as Jimian. Doesn't have very much mana, has no ability to hijack anything, bounce around in the corridor of Alcove, and he'll be taken down by Yuji. So our solo laners for 100 Thieves get picked up yet again. Kumo takes away more of Will's jungle, but Busio, just this menace, right? <laughs> it feels like FlyQuest are trying to play a game where they gotta play keep away. Like, you don't want to interact with Busio right now. You gotta stay as far away as you can. And Kumo, I wonder how well he's... Did he get the top lane turret? Not quite yet. Not quite yet. It's it, pretty much he could at any point just walk up to it without minions and take it. True. Any point. Uh, actually, he could just like walk up, right? Take a couple of auto attacks, and because Trigger I don't even think he's going to take more than one. I think well, that's with how no minion. With uh, no minions, the turret becomes very strong. Uh, uh, Observer, do me a favor. Let's let's check on that turret. Let, let's let's pound down. All pound right, down. Right. Honestly, so this remember, turret. turrets take two thirds less damage. It's got 64. Si it's gonna be enough. It's very close. It's very close. It's gonna be enough, dude. If minions are there, it's definitely, but it takes two, it takes two thirds less damage. I know, but I think Kumo's got enough damage for it at the moment. That's all I'm saying. It's, I don't, I'm not saying anybody could do it. I think only Kumo could do it. Well, we'll find out if the opportunity ever arises. In the meantime, they are oh. looking to take a fight in the mid lane. Against Busio as well, who's got two items built up, one of them being Mortal Reminder. Try to cut through a lot of the healing that Kumo might be able to provide for a fight. But they gotta be cautious. Instead, they're continuing their 1-3-1. One, one. one way Flycus couldn't win is by splitting up this map consistently, always dragging around all the members of 100 Thieves, never allowing them okay. to group up with the Weaver's Walls. Doesn't able to cut off the connection from Jimian, but now that he's golden, that could be their chance to strike. He's bounced around. He's gonna die here in the fight, even with Explosive Castle, he's still away. It might just be a trade. He's burning one for one at the moment. Even Will in the middle of the fight, and Explosive Cast does a little bit to disengage from the fight for FlyQuest. But Kumo top. They gotta be careful. They gotta get out of this, because look at where BMFX is. Even if Kumo is top trying to take the turret, they've gotta make sure they get out themselves or take one with them. They're getting a lot of damage onto Tenacity, and Tenacity, he's gonna be the one focused on a diamond. All the while, Kumo still wailing away at the inhibitor charts as Diamond is eating a lot of time from 100 Thieves members. Busio's been mid this entire time as well. He has been uninteractive with the entirety of what was happening bot side. The diamond, he might be able to make his way out. He does get slowed. I think he should go down here. Oh. Well, I mean, he should, but he's he burning. Has no he's burning a lot of time, man. He, he's killing True. a lot of time. Vim effects, hundred thieves in general, catching a couple minions there. Oh my God, is he waiting for another soul proc? I think so. I think he's waiting for it. Oh, but okay. Jimmy, make all sure right, that doesn't right. happen. Oh. Okay, well, we should know how this one goes. Gale Force in for Kumo. Tenacity. What can you do, Boo? You can't really do anything. You just gotta run away. He's got a ghost still available, but he hasn't even popped yet. The Undying Rage, he makes sure it's not even worthwhile. Kumo now pops it, looking for BMFX, looking for the double kill and a shutdown. He finished off by Jimian, but still, they've got the gold over to Kumo. A little, a little messier than it maybe needed to, right? He does get the two kills, but he also gave over a shutdown right there to Jimian. And suddenly, Jimian's becoming another threat. There's a lot of individual members that are looking to shine, right? Ever since Busio has come out of the bottom lane, he hasn't necessarily had the same kind of impact on the game. He's yeah. still just trying to farm up, and he's level 12. He's tied with a lot of the solo laners on the map. 
I'm waiting. I'm waiting for Busio to have another opportunity to play because this is one of the criticisms that we've had of Hundred Thieves, right? We know they're very individually talented, but their planning in the mid game has been a little bit lackluster, mm -hmm. and so they tend to take a lot of these fights where they have to fight their way out and show that they're really strong. But this is one of those spots, right? Tenacity kept himself alive a lot longer than he maybe ought to have, and it will allow 100 Thieves to actually get a couple of kills back instead of just losing their top lane. Granted, Kumo never popped Ghost. He held onto it until there, where he wanted to kill BM Impact as well for uh, two kills. So I, I gotta take that with a grain of salt. I feel like he could have killed Tenacity sooner had he wanted to and still then been able to turn. Instead, he focused on... A, you know, waiting it out, seeing if he had to burn any other sums, then going and saying, you know what, I want BM effects as well, two kills, plus shutdown off BM effects, even if there's yep. shutdown picked up by Jimmy. <laughs> Kumo did get a good chunk of change off of that. He's got the Navari Quick Blade built up in his inventory as well. We are seeing, like, this game is very much decided by how the people are going to operate in the side lanes. We haven't necessarily seen a whole lot of fighting in the mid lane. It's just like, oh, I've caught you out, oh, I've caught you out, and now but Kumo. Josh. Isn't that That's the best thing for FlyQuest? Tomo, 0-5, at the, uh, you know, 0-5-0, zero, zero, right at the start of this game, having a hard and difficult time. He's finally got two items completed. Diamond, he's got two assists as well. He's got to sell the locket of the Iron Solari. They've been slowly clawing their way back, and we talked about the scaling options on FlyQuest. Is this not the best situation for FlyQuest at the moment? It's very chaotic, right? It when you see this kind of games, like, yes, FlyQuest have scaling options, but it's not as though they are super favorably interacting, right? Tomo can't hit through the wind wall. Uh, Spyrax can get on top of people, but he's also got to deal with the fact that Jimmy can take away Kumo's ultimate, and suddenly both Silas and Kumo can't die, right? There's a lot of play to these team fights later on, and so while FlyQuest are happy to take a 50-50 later on, you're kind of asking, could we have won a little bit faster? I think the answer might have been yes, and now I think we're flipping the game over this yeah. upcoming mountain soul where FlyQuest will have to fight, ready or not. Here we go. They have to. And that's the worst thing for them, as you were calling out. It's team fight composition on the side of 100 Thieves, but on the, on the side of FlyQuest, they got more split push, and I don't think they want to group. In fact, it almost seems it's strange to say that, you know, soul's a soul. You want a soul. It almost feels strange to say FlyQuest might just want to forfeit it. Yeah, I'm not sure that's the, I know, the that's greatest why I, thing, I know, right? But... That's why I'm like, I, I'm torn. Because a soul yeah. is a soul. You want a soul. That's that's worth a ton of gold. You already got three dragons. There's no dragons pick up for FlyQuest. But if FlyQuest can trade that for Baron... If FlyQuest can't trade it for Baron. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. Like <laughs> They can. There's there's too many people under these that can sell out the dragon. Right? That they will still be able to threaten a 4v5. But I think that FlyQuest want that. I think they want a 4v5. That's why it's nah. tough. This is tough for me, Josh. I mean... Because normally I'm right there with you. I think that that would they're be the case. They're doing it. They're trying but to do it. They're out sneaking it away. And they're not even looking for the trade. They're instead using Tomo to eat up a lot of the attention of 100 Thieves. They've 100 got Thieves don't they know. They snuck in. They went through the okay. back wall. Now they know. They used that ult to be able to spot it out. But it's too late. Cannon Barrage cannot steal it. Okay, who needs a trade for the dragon when you can just do a hundred thieves not responding at all? And that gives so much power to the side laners in Kumo, in Spyrax. Josh, that's the thieves. shot calling. That's the shot calling you expect from someone like Diamond. He might be 0-3, but all he has to do is say, hey, we can do this. Let's go for it now. But now, is it going to be enough, right? The soul is going to be such a big boon to 100 thieves, and they have to walk through barrels in order to even make it happen. Yeah, but Diamond? Showing off that he's rather tanky. Kumo on the other side, getting jumped on, taking a lot of damage. Whoa! He didn't, hold. he didn't even get a chance to hold. He got blown up in the fight. And 100 Thieves now, they're just here. That's they're outhanding. They're controlling the dragon. That's going to be Mountain Soul going over 100 Thieves. But the, the other big thing is they just stopped. They just stopped the Baron push from FlyQuest. Kumo was the one that needed to have yeah. the Baron buff, and now he doesn't have it. So Tenacity, he's finally back. I don't want to say he's like back in the game, but he actually gets to play for a little while. Jimmy continuing to scale up. Busio continuing to scale. They're still looking for their opportunities. And I feel like it's almost weird. I feel like they have three split pushers and three lanes, right? Yeah. <laughs> it, it is funny to look at 100 Thieves and be like, you, 
No, they've got power. They look for the okay, spike here on the Tomo. Okay, Tomo. Tomo. He tried to take the turret, but he jumps over the wall to be able to escape. Diamond as well. Use the body slam away from the fight. Well, bot lane Tyrex fights against Jimmy and using the ult. That's going to be Fate Seal. Looking to see if he can seal the fate of Jimmy and he went in. He's golden, but UG, he'll be here. No, he doesn't even get an assist. It's just a shutdown solo kill for Spyrex. Spyrex getting the better hand, outplaying Jimmy and in the side lane now. Is that enough for FlyQuest? Can they get more off of this? Spyrex is pushing uncontested down here in the bottom lane, and there's no response. Nasty gets the top lane turret, but the bottom lane turret's worth way more. B BFX, what are you doing? Oh no, BFX, you can't fight Kumo. What are you thinking? <laughs> yeah, that was a... Uh... Not the right place to be, unfortunately. FlyQuest will be able to get this, and now Will's here. Will's looking for Spyrex. There is no way out. He was dead meat, so they'll trade that for what? One, two, two turrets in total? So we got the, the bottom lane. They got bottom Just lane the and one. mid lane. Oh, they got the mid lane one too. Okay, they finally knocked that one over. This game is very chaotic, Alex. This is one of the most chaotic games we've seen, right? So much fighting in the side lanes, not a whole lot of people lining up for these objectives. 100 Thieves have been able to get most of them, except for the Baron sneak. Mm -hmm. That was, that was got a lot play. of scaling elements. I'm, Clever girl. I'm still waiting. Like, both teams have opted into this game being a flip over a single late game team fight. And Honestly, really impressed by Spyrex to actually grind this fight out. And the big thing, I think, is actually dodging away from this stun, right? Yep. Preventing Jimmy from getting that last bit of damage. I love that. Though, right there, Jimmy would have died just based off the snapback. But I love the fact that, as you mentioned, dodging away from the abscond abduct keeps Spyrex alive so he can turn that fight around, gets the turret bot lane, they get the turret mid lane. Sure, they eventually trade Spyrex's life for it. But that is a lot of gold shifted over to FlyQuest, and since they are down the sole 200 Thieves, this 2,000 gold lead they have is essentially just more making the game even. Yeah. So I kind of want to take a moment to evaluate some of the players that have become very strong in this game, right? Both Kumo and Busio, massive problems for the other team to try and deal with. But one of the things I always look at when these players as to evaluate like how well did they play this game is how much pressure did they put on the game. and. I'm gonna be honest, uh -huh. I feel like this game has become so chaotic that I feel like the leads that they built up for themselves haven't necessarily meant a whole lot just quite yet. I think we're still waiting for everybody to go back into this chaotic team fight, and while that is, you know, they're coming in with this big advantage, it feels like neither of these teams have been particularly Wait. strong at making mid-game plays. They are really just focusing on Did you their see hands Ku all this game. Oh, Kumo, uh, he was there in the brush for so long, I thought he was gonna ambush uh, Jimian. But then again, I don't think you want to ambush a level 16 Silas who can steal away your ult, and since it's such a low cooldown now, you can easily yep. uh, look for anyone else. How bad would it be for Jimmy to take uh, to take Tomo's ultimate? I think it's like almost useless, isn't it? Eh, has some applications. Yeah, not not much though. Not much. <laughs> it's like taking a ghost. Right? Yeah, pretty much. It's like, okay. That, yeah, and that, that's, that's, that's not the, the worst thing ever. And that's what I'm saying. That's, that's the application yeah. you get from it. It's not right, horrible, yeah. but uh, honestly, you, you want Kumos. You you want Spire okay. Axes. You even want Diamonds now. A little bit of a skirmish there. Trading back and forth. Jimmy in. He's popped his own ghost. He's looking for the back line. He's in there. He's getting a little bit of damage, but now Kumo, he's on the side, and Kumo, don't make the same mistake you did last time. He got caught out a little bit too early, and now with Diamond cut off by his own Weaver Wall. Gotta be careful. All five are grouped up from 100 Thieves. This is when they tend to feel the most powerful with this composition. But the, this is one of the problems that, like both teams are running into. Like Neither of them really have good ways to hit turrets, right? No. Neither of them have good ways to just, like force the other team off. You are really just going to have to go for a dive, and neither team feels strong enough to actually do that. So, Alex, we got a minute 15 left before the Elder. We got 25 uh -huh. seconds left on the Baron, and I uh -huh. can't imagine 100 Thieves are going to allow a Diamond to make another one of those shot calls. Just sneak it out from under their nose. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. That's all I got to say there. I mean, I don't, uh, I don't have much more. Because if they... much more? If they can get oh my, if they can get in there, that's just gonna be insane. But yeah. I'm also now looking at the elements for FlyQuest. Again, this bot lane with cheat codes, having not done well in the earlier game, three items have been completed for Telmo. Now he is going to start uh, bringing quite he a hurts. punch to these fights. Yep. He no longer is in that state of vulnerability where he feels like he's completely useless. He actually will provide such a great amount of DPS for the team. Yeah. And 
he has to maneuver around that wind wall, right? It's so difficult for Zeri to participate if you are just going in this uh -oh, narrow diamond. corner, but Kumo has a flank. Yeah, they're looking for the fight, but look, BMVX getting jumped on by Kumo. They're having the fight on the other side with the Cannabarage getting a lot of damage. They're gonna get the kill on the diamond, but BMVX is also gonna fall. Kumo in the back line, flashing onto Denacity. He's got Undying Rage, but can anyone else save him? Can they help him? Kertrindamir is gone. That's Tomo now kiting back the best he can. He's got damage on the flash hit. Busio showing up big in the fight. Grabs a shutdown on the 1 and 6 Zeri, but now FlyQuest. Spyrex says, our only chance right now, we have to take something off the map. We can't go for the fight, but they're so low. They're too low to actually want to go for it, so it will be an Elder Dragon secured by 100 Thieves. That is a big window now for them to attack and feel comfortable looking for these dimes. And they pick that up, they're continuing to scale, but we're seeing such a chaotic fight in all of these situations, right? There's no real front lines and back lines. You have so many melee bruisers taking each other's place. And 100 Thieves, now that they pick this up, they're going to be starting up the Baron because FlyQuest can't contest them. No, nah, not at all. It should be an easy two neutral objective take for 100 Thieves. And this is what we're expecting. Now they've got all the pressure. You were saying that both teams were too timid to look for dives because they weren't sure how everything was going to go. Well, you better bet with an Elder and a Baron, 100 Thieves no longer going to be contained by those parameters. And they're going to have to back away. We'll see a bunch of items comes through. Tenacity might have a full Infinity Edge. BMFX completes the Rapid Fire Cannon. 100 Thieves doesn't get better than this. But we'll take another look at this. Kumo with the big flank is kind of the player that I kind of look, look at because he had such a big advantage. He tries to find BMFX, but then it's confused. Where do you go? He actually runs away from the low health tenacity yeah. in order to try and jump into the middle of the enemy team. And I think that ended up, up being a little bit of their doom. The target selection coming in here for 100 Thieves was better. They mm -hmm. retained this death ball. They had a lot of individual members that could hit the same target, whereas Kumo thought he could be the hero. Unfortunately, there are too many thieves. In fact, there are a hundred of them. No, there's five. <laughs> <laughs> there's only five. I mean, I hate to break it to you. I only see five on I that. can't do math. That's okay. You told me you not did. to do math. Nah, I did. I did. I, that is on me. That is on me. I told you not to do math on air. And now, it seems like hundred thieves, they've done the math. Easy take of that turret. They don't even have to worry about it. Oh, it's Kumo. He tries to set up a little bit of a split push because they do have that open inhibitor top side. That is their one point that they can attack and try to see if they can catch 100 Thieves off guard. Yeah, but Kumo's not there. They have Kumo grouped up with the rest of the team in order to try and team fight. Mm -hmm. And 100 Thieves, I mean, with you, when you have both these buffs, it is very hard to fight against them. Tenacity still has the Baron and he's pushing up towards the top lane. They will bring three waves of pressure for FlyQuest to try and deal with. Not to mention that Tenacity did not opt for Infinity Edge, instead opted to be someone who could survive a little bit longer in these fights, because as you saw from the last time, as long as they can survive long enough, Tenacity can turn it around. They can easily utilize the death dances that they have on both Tenacity and Will to heal back up, even you know, in fact how long it took him to finally fall. He was able to get so much healing out through that. Yeah, and there is... Definitely not a shortage of damage on either side of the rift, but FlyQuest, this is it. They're gonna have to try and defend something. The Elder Dragon is gone, but they still have two ways to deal with the, bar with the Baron. As UG's looking for the Weaver's Wall to cut off the retreat from 100 Thieves, they cut off Fusio and Jimmy, but they don't want to pull the trigger. They're too tepid. They're worried that even there, Spyrex took a lot of damage just from diving in. Now they should lose this turret with a minion starting to corral back. Oh. But flash in from Diamond with explosive cast. They start the fight. Kumo into the back line. But can he do the damage needed? Will will be the first casualty. Shut down by Tomo. He's back in the game. But they're looking to see if they can take down Tenacity. Tenacity's still alive. They've got Fusio to deal with now inside the base. And it's big Fusio here. He's going golden. He'll die. The shutdown. If they get it to Tomo, they have bounced back. Josh. Finally, FlyQuest finding a much-needed teamfight win. But what can they do with this? Tenacity is still alive. Jimmy's still alive. That's a lot of wave clear for FlyQuest. So FlyQuest, they hold on to the game. But look how chaotic this is, right? Will and Booster are on one side of the fight. You see Spyrex and Kumo diving into the other. And it really just becomes which aggressive AD bruisers are going to survive for longer. And the big thing comes down here. Spyrex finds his way no, no, onto no, no. the It was diamond. It was diamond there with the engage that caught them completely off guard. I mean, he catches up off guard, but it becomes a complete melee, right? Everybody mm -hmm. is dying all over the place, and Busio has to commit his ultimate onto somebody who's basically already dead. And 
you know, Diamond starts off a great fight, but <laughs> the fight's still going 20 seconds later. I know, it's wild. It was a wild <laughs> fight for sure. I think this is huge though. The fact that Tomo gets shut down off Busio, that was a fat bounty on his head. And look True. at what he's got now. He's got a GA off it, another BF sword. Tomo is firmly back in this game, even yeah, if the KDA does not show that. Let's count the GAs. There are five on the board. Nasty, wait, Will, Busio. Wait, wait, you gotta count them like the count. One, a two, who? No, wait, no, one, a two, a three. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 you gotta get the last one, uh, I almost uh, forgot. Uh. There we go. Anyways, going back into this game. The veteran C from FlyQuest, I gotta praise them. Tomo and Diamond, how massively far behind they were in this game. To show that they have this resilience, to stay strong, to follow the team, to have trust in these rookies as well. They have now been fought valiantly back. We're 37 minutes into the game. We have an open inhibitor with bounty gold available for FlyQuest, but also the fact that 100 Thieves still feel confident enough to push towards the, uh, the inhibitors of FlyQuest. True. I mean, nobody really gets stronger from this position. It's really about how you try and find these actual plays. Spyrox tries to go in 100 Thieves. They believe him, but they pull FlyQuest towards the top side of the map, and suddenly oh, all the vision seconds. control that FlyQuest had it's not going to mean as much. There's no teleports, actually, on the site of yeah. FlyQuest. They have to group up. There's no way for them to get a flank on the 100 Thieves. Well, 30, 19 seconds now until Elder spawns. That's a lot of time that now can't be burned by split pushing. They have to wait it out. They have to see if they can contest around this or if they can hope for YOLO play from Kumo. If he can somehow just end this game Trindamir style, the back door would be insane as Jimmy oh. does find Diamond a little bit. Gets shot back by Yuji, taking a lot of the damage in the initial stages of the fight. While Will goes in the back like Tomo, he's cutting it back. They've got the kill onto Diamond, but can Tomo be the hero to save the day? He's getting a little bit of damage onto Will and onto Busio. He's still kiting. He's still waiting. Look at how he harasses these members for a hey, Tomo. He dashes away. They've got the Weaver's Wall. They got him. getting jumped on now. He's fighting back. He'll go back into stasis with the help of GA. I think it will end up more for <laughs> for three those are all that remain on both teams the three split pusher is still alive for a hundred thieves but we still have tomo staying alive every single guardian angel gets popped in that except for tenacity they have almost no resurrection and left back in. Them. going back at the same time a hundred thieves full control over the elder how do flyquest contest i don't know they've got they have the, smite they have smite they have that avenue to get into this but now it is worrying because tomo is getting pushed out by tenacity they're getting a lot of damage but you just got to be more careful he's the real target that they can take away the that's gonna be huge for the side of 100 Thieves, and they get him. They make sure that he's not gonna be part of the equation. Kumo, he's on the flank, looking for the angle, but that damage from Tomo, constantly kiting it back, but not scorned, it abducts the life of Tomo. And 100 Thieves, even though Tomo stayed alive for so long, he finally goes down, they spot out where Kumo is. 100 Thieves, they have control. They finally they? have control over Do this Elder they? Dragon. They I will, know. just give it a second. I don't know, man. This is just going cha so chaotic. And look at Flyquest. I think they're posturing just to see if they can burn down Baron. Yeah, they're pinging it. They're pinging I mean, it. They're, they're trying. They're going to try, go, baby, but it's not go. fast enough. Go, baby, go. Ah, oh, they're going to bail. <laughs> not right, quite Josh. fast enough for Flyquest. <laughs> Second Elder. <sighs> All right. There's been a lot that's Here we go. in the last fight. This minutes. is the last fight, right? Uh, I don't know. We'll yeah. see. We'll I see. feel like the last couple fights could have been the last one. The 100 Thieves finally lining up yet again. Yeah, Dude, they pick I, up I, the I Elder, they the, pick up the Baron. I thought the last, like, five fights were going to be the last one. And we're still here. We're still here. 40 minutes in, and then double buffed 100 Thieves. Okay. They cracked a lot before, but the inhibitors seemed difficult. Flyquests were ready to party. Yeah, I mean, you called out Diamond. He had the big engage last time, right? So now FlyQuest, they have to find something big yet again. It's on Diamond. He's the one who has the easiest way to get a lot of these fights actually started. But there's a lot of play that needs to come through, right? Yuji needs to be able to find a multi-man stun. He just needs to throw out the rocks at the right place at the right time because they're starting to run out of opportunities because BMFX, the one player who hasn't necessarily had the same kind of impact on this game is still building up on the set. He's on 132 souls. That's six increases of range. He's sitting at 620 attack range and that is starting to rival what Tomo can even bring. So 100 Thieves, they're still scaling.
Yeah, they're scaling. FlyQuest, I feel like they're still scaling with Tomo. Almost full build as well. How, three kills as recent. So he's do, doing a good yeah. job of fighting back into this game, but it's going to be difficult for them to fight against this push. Massive minion wave crashing into the inhibitor turret pot lane. Yeah. Oh. Kubo not able to go for oh, a they split. just going to look for the, the game. wall. Wall to kind of cut off the fight for now, but that will fall and the minions are still there. They jump out of Kubo on the other side. Look at the damage on top of a Verdivian. They cut, punch back. Tenacity. They look to see if they can reset the fight. They've got the Nexus Terrors pretty low with just a couple autos, and once the minions start crashing again, they can do it again. Yeah, they still have 30 seconds left of the Elder Dragon, about 100 Thieves. Not Thieves. looking for the end of the game just quite yet. They're uh, waiting for the next wave. They still got Elder. They still got the buffs on their side. There's going to be Tannin Barrage. Good little bit of damage. They take down the first second turn. Flight Quest, this is your last chance. you got to fight back because you're losing your entire base. Kumo goes to the back line. They're bad to around, but the Elder should stay. Members out. They've got this. 100 Thieves. 42 minutes in. Finally with the double buff that they got before. It helps them to pick up victory. And it happens time after time after time. 100 Thieves drag the game late. They just take one or two team fights. They coin flip the game over. And it gives me, it gives me like thoughts all the way back to teams like CLG EU who are just going to turtle it out. They're not going to worry about all these early game plays. They'll find some advantages, but they will still prefer to fight you later on in the game. And 100 Thieves do it yet again, taking down FlyQuest and adding another loss to the FlyQuest column, but finding a Another opportunity for 100 Thieves to continue staying within just games of Team Liquid. Trying their best to make sure they're right on the heels of Team Liquid. With that game, well fought again, similar to how they were yesterday. We'll see if FlyQuest can pull on Evil Geniuses in the second game. Make sure you stay tuned.